This is the most offensive claim that can be made in the realm of religion. Here it is. There is only one God, one Savior, one true religion, one holy book, one gospel, one way of salvation. All other religious claims are lies, deceptions, doctrines of Satan and demons that lead people to eternal hell, along with all the immoral, irreligious, atheistic, hedonistic, naturalistic unbelievers. It just happens to be the truth. That is the exclusive truth of Christianity. Even within the professing church, any deviation from the true gospel of grace is a damning lie to be cursed. Many, many elder brothers in our churches, their whole way of thinking and correction is 100% psychology and human. It's not divine because they haven't studied the Bible. And no wonder you have problems in your churches because you think you can improve on God's way and do it the way the psychologists say. Don't hurt anybody. Just call him aside and say it nicely. Show that to me in the Bible. No, he says, tell all the churches with the condition of Ephesus and the elder there and the elder there, tell everybody. But Lord, that's humiliating. It'll test whether they humble themselves or not. God's ways. He says, you got to be humbled and broken and crushed. And then rivers of living water will flow from you if you don't get offended. Don't bring the principles of psychology into the Christian church. There's too much of it in the Christian television and Christian circles nowadays and even in our midst. Our culture is like those in Hosea that contend with the priest. Our culture is like the harlot of Proverbs. She eats forbidden fruit and she wipes her mouth and then she brazenly says, I've done nothing wrong. How are you going to deal with that as a minister of Christ? What kind of power does your eloquence have to change the heart of people like this? You need to understand, the heart of man is like Jericho. It is tightly shut up. No one comes out and no one goes in. And so is this culture. And you are not going to be able to carry out the work of Christ. You are not going to be able to advance the cause of the gospel with your silly little toys. We must take up the weapons of our warfare and they are few, but they are mighty unto God. The other thing I want to say is, in all these things, the important thing is discipline. I believe discipline is the one thing that Christians need the most, but uh, want the least. Let me read to you in 1 Corinthians in chapter 9. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul who accomplished so much in his life, the reason he accomplished so much was not only because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, not only because he spent time in prayer and uh, read the Word of God, but also because he disciplined his body. Verse 27, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. I discipline my body, which means my eyes, my tongue especially, and I make it my slave. I make my body do what it should do, not what it wants to do. That is discipline in very simple language. And if you don't have discipline, I don't care what experience you had, I can tell you, you will not make it in the final day. Most saints, when they look in the mirror, they're saddened and frightened by what they see. I know that oftentimes I am. And I find encouragement in something that one night just came into my mind. God did not do all of this. God did not send his son to become flesh in the likeness of sinful flesh, to live among us, to die, having suffered the wrath of God. God did not do all of this, saint, so that when you step into heaven, the first thing you see on his face is a scowl of disappointment. And that's what so many of you have in the back of your mind. You look in the mirror of God's word, just like you'd be surprised if you went home with me how normal my life is and how much it is like yours. I, I don't want to pretend anything. 
and, and I know how you feel. Like, how can it be? I mean, there's all these great men and these great books, and, and then there's me, right? You look in the mirror, there's me. Where do I go? Jesus didn't suffer what he suffered so that the first time you see him, he looks at you with a scowl. Oh, be, be so encouraged. 